Hey guys, it's Brenda from my Wee Wee Boons channel. Today I'm here to do a tag. A um, moon buttons tag. Let's see. Moon button reborn nursery tag. I was looking over at the laptop for some questions. I have Danielle Cassandra with me. Oh, she's so, so cute. I have a video of uh, her and I on the land. I, it's my previous video. Check it out if you love to relax in nature. There's lots of bird sounds. And <laughs> she is so sweet. And I changed her into this beautiful romper. That fits her so perfectly. And she looks so realistic in it. And I love her. Yes. But I'm also here to answer Moon Buttons tag. I love tags, guys. There are eight of them. I am looking over at my laptop. I see them. She has written them out in the description. So I will link her video as well. So you can check it out. And there are her questions listed in the description of her video, not mine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have to redo that. Retake. I started coughing a bit. I don't know why I have allergies. There's, I have allergies and I'm not sure what blooms in the fall. It's not quite fall, but anyways. Number one, how do you store your babies, their clothes and equipment? Example, like bottles, your bouncy chairs, crimps. Okay, I store mine pretty much everywhere. <laughs> I don't have a dedicated room. I do have a dedicated room downstairs, but it's also storage for my other hobbies that I've had before the Reborn hobby. I was a consultant for Avon. And, and by the way, when I tell you that I used to be a consultant, I used to sell these products. I was always my own best customer. So I have overstock of Avon. Um, Epicure, which is spices and cooking utensils. And I have uh, Scentsy, which are the Scentsy wax cubes. I have a bin over there just full of them. And warmers all over the place. <laughs> um, and I have uh, Grace Adele products, which are purses. But they're a special type of purses, like a mix and match type deal uh they used to say it was transformers for girls <laughs> but wallets purses accessories for the purses like scarves and clip-ons and keychains and fun stuff fun stuff but as you can see i have a bookcase right there it's kind of overflowing i have bottles in those bins i have um a thing over there I have another one over there, the same sort of thing as a bookshelf with bins in it. I have those filled with reborn accessories. I have an ottoman underneath my coffee table that's filled with blankets and um, reborn things. I have baskets, display baskets. There are, let's see, one, two, three, three behind this chair and under this um, see that pink thing with my headphones? There's babies in there. I keep them covered to keep the dust off because my collection is very, very huge. I have a car seat that is on out in the living room all the time. And I have, I switch up the babies in them. I have Zena over there always on her spot. She has a spot in the living room. Elodie has a spot in the living room. I have another basket behind this uh, love seat with baskets and I have um, more over there 
in the living room. Let's see, in the living room right now, I have, well, including Danielle, because she was in the car seat along with Camprian. There are two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, thirteen babies in this room, but you can only see one, two, three, four on display. The rest are in baskets and covered. I have in my dining room, I have a whole tower of those plastic bin drawers, but I stack them on top of each other and I cover it with a black, <laughs> let's see. Okay, so that is with LED and there's, um, excuse, I've been starting cleaning up around here. Those are glasses that I'm not sure what to do with the glasses. like. Do I want to open them and they're a Christmas story glasses with um, ice cream trays of the, the lamp, the leg. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know. I love them, but I don't want to know if I want to open them because they're kind of collectible. But anyways, <laughs> there's my ottoman with a whole bunch of stuff. I have all these bins filled with accessories like bottles, posies, hair bands of just whole wonder wafers stuff like that on this side that that where's my finger <laughs> this black thing is actually like those storage bins on top of each other and i just cover it with a black cloth and then i go in there when needed um i have reborn uh re-weighting materials like the crystal beads and the polyfill and the zip ties in bins underneath this table so i try and hide things i try and hide things like all over the place and then my bedroom has uh these sort of bookshelves on their side and i use them to display a whole bunch of babies i have videos of my messy room downstairs i have a lot of bins um, I have a lot of those drawer bins and I have a lot of those cloth bins like in bookcases like all over um, mostly in the living room dining room my bedroom and of course my storage room downstairs so oh my laptop but okay <laughs> that was a big question number two do you take your babies outside the home well, I do when I go to the land. I love taking um, a doll out there and changing them out there. Um, I have taken them to work a few times to a school. I'm a teacher. So I, I have a video of some reactions when school is on. But most of the time I take them just for the staff to see. Um, I don't take them like out for walks or anything. I'm in a small town, so... I just, yeah, it's just too much. I have just taken them to the workplace. Oh, I've taken them to the doctor's office once. But that was many years ago. That was my first outing video that I have on my channel. Um, It's the most watched video that I own. So, anyways, um, not normally I don't take them. Oh, I take them on vacation with me too when I'm going. But... Say if I took them with me on vacation, like when I go see Wendy, for instance, I'll take a doll to her house or to our other friend's house, Jen, and we'll like do a reborn meetup with them. But as for taking them out shopping or going out to eat with us, no, I don't do that. I'd like to. I'd like to try it. Number four, do you take your babies to visit friends and relatives? And if not, would you like to? Well, to friends, meet up. I've met Wendy in person and Jen in person and Melinda in person. She's from the state. She was up visiting Jen and we all had a mini reborn meetup. I loved it. We brought our dolls. It was so much fun. And that's the day that I learned how to reweight them so i was very grateful for that sounds like i have a cold <laughs> sounds like i have a recipe throat you're getting she's getting heavy this dolls are so realistic okay 
Oh, she's so cute. Anyways, um, relatives, no, <laughs> they don't like the dolls, um, so no, I don't take them over to a friend's house or a, I've had a few friends come over here and I showed the doll, the dolls, and they were blown away and they love them, but I don't have many people over, especially with COVID, actually with COVID, I've had no one here at my house, so. Um, just, just to f friends in the city, like Wendy, she's the only Dolly friend I have in person, so, and I don't get to see her very often, just once a year, but even with COVID, I never, we never travel, so I haven't seen her in two years, uh, <laughs> so when I go to her house, yes, I bring, I bring a doll. Um, number five, how do other people's reactions make you feel about your hobby? Uh, I love showing the dolls and I love their reactions of, um, of how realistic they are. But the, when the question comes up of how expensive are they, like how much money are they, that's when I kind of wanna not not wanna hide but not i feel uncomfortable explaining that they're a lot of money because i know the thought of like when people don't know about this hobby and they come into it and they realize how expensive they are that's when that's a shock value that's more of a shock than how realistic they look or feel is the price that always kind of makes me like say a couple of hundred dollars even that's more than that. and then i'll quickly say some are more than that and some are less than that which yeah they could be less if they're like the boo boo baby second hand third hand i've so i've seen them and then i quickly explain um their the price their art so it depends on the sculptors how, like how popular or how good they are plus the artists themselves so like the reborn artist like say if um you have a really well-known sculptor artist plus a very well-known reborn artist those two high they're the, you're gonna have a very expensive doll you can have a well-named sculptor and then a not-so-well-named reborn artist and it's going to reflect on the price. So I always say expect um, like a couple of hundred into the like thousands and that's when they're like <laughs> and that's when I feel like mm, yeah they're expensive. <laughs> that's the part about the hobby that kind of still makes me like go like cause the thought of spending so much on a doll is something i don't like admitting i guess like i don't know anyways <laughs> it's hard to explain <sighs> number let's see six do you experience times you don't want to interact with your babies yeah of course they're that's the greatest thing about this hobby because I can have that baby fever and oh, I want to hold a baby. I want to feel a baby. I want to smell a baby because yeah, they they can smell. Mm, like when you wash your clothes and baby clothes, laundry soap and wonder wafers help. But the best thing is, is that when I'm tired, I can leave them in the car seat for the rest of the day, the rest of the week. When I'm busy in life, I don't have time to interact with the dolls. I love looking at them always. But yeah, of course, there are times when I don't really want to interact with them. And um, that's okay because we can. They're not real babies, so 
you cannot feed them and not take care of them and not and do them as much as you want. And <laughs> so yeah, there are times when I don't interact with my babies because I'm too busy, too tired, getting up that age, getting tired, coming back from a long day of work, and no, I don't. But then there are times when I do want to hold a baby, when I am tired or am sad or am wanting to see the feelings come and go. And that's perfectly okay because they're not real. So, because being a mother of real sons, there were times when you don't even want to interact with the real baby because you're just in that mood of like depressive disorders or that I've experienced before and you don't really want to interact with people even but you have to because they're real and they need you so these no I hope that answered that. I hope that didn't sound mean did it <laughs> I hope that um, number seven, how do you keep the enthusiasm going for the hobby? Have you ever felt like giving up the hobby and selling your babies? I've been in this hobby since 2015 and yes, the phases, the, the different, there are different phases for the most part that a lot of us go through. And yes, even our YouTube, my YouTube channel, I thought about giving it up so many times over the years. And it comes and goes. Yes, I've, some days I'm like, I can sell all my dolls and get the money and use it for other things. But, like, feelings of guilt of how much this hobby really is. Feelings of overwhelm. Overwhelming feelings of how big I allowed this, my collection to get. Or how many, because I go through it. Addictions. They are addictions. I get addicted to the bottles. And then, oh, I want to collect pacifiers. No, I want to collect the hairbands. No, I want to collect different types of dolls. I want to collect different artists. I want to see how they are. I love the box openings. It's like Christmas all over again. And it's, oh, I remember the very first time I clicked and spent all that money in one click i remember how that felt like and it was almost like an addiction that thrill of oh, this is so much money and click inside i bought it so because normally when i do pay payment plans don't work for me because i'm so afraid that i might forget or they might forget that I paid an installment and then um, I'd rather just save up and get and get something. So, <clears throat> but how do I keep the enthusiasm going? Sometimes like there are bonding, issue, bonding issues in the hobby. Like say if, <laughs> of course she's my girl, but let's just say that I wasn't really feeling her. I would change her into a boy. Easy as that. You know what else I've done with this one? My I also own the Phoenix by Andrea Cho. She is the uh, Greta sculpt. I switched their limbs. Because, right, I, I don't know, the Phoenix, as much as I love him, I find that his limbs are a bit long for his face. He's, he's got a small head and a big body. So I wanted to change them out and see what they look like, and it worked. So I change limbs out sometimes, not very often, <laughs> but I have done it. I switch them back though, and then or switch genders is the most fun. That making up the names, a new name for them. Um, uh, but yeah, buying sometimes the outfits. My clothes collection is giant. I keep remembering you know what i have a basement full of clothes just go downstairs and shop in your own basement <laughs> but shopping looking rediscovering new things um that's another thing why i do like my big giant collection is because um 
I can put a doll down for uh, even a few months because I have so many. I can't interact with all of them all the time. So I rediscovered the dolls, and which is awesome. I love doing that too. So rediscovering them or changing up their genders and switching their names. So, but yeah, um, um, you know what? I love making videos for YouTube, like the stop motion, the role play. I've never done that in a long time, but I do like fun things, fun things to do with your hobby making them like giving them a theme changing their theme so much fun anyways <laughs> um no oh have you ever felt like yeah i think i answered that okay number eight the last question ramble 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 what would your advice be to a newbie collector just entering the hobby my advice would be to research uh, the artists, of course, um, make sure that they are not scammers and you do that by researching. And don't ask for just safety photos because they can be photoshopped. Um, just ask around. Um, when I first got in this hobby, I found a friend. I found lost friends, but I found that one friend that we had a lot in common with and that was wendy hi wendy if you're watching she doesn't always watch but that's fine if, she, if you are watching wendy is my first one and you know what we we learn together we'll talk about it together i'm not alone in this hobby i'm with wendy and i remember in the beginning who is this who is that uh let's research let's find out um so but do, just do your research, um, but befriending somebody for the first time who you have a lot in common with, if you're both newbies, or even if they're not a newbie. Um, I did befriend a few people who were in the hobby already, so they would kind of guide you along. Uh, that would always help too. Um, also, I don't know, you just... What I did myself personally is that you comment on people's videos, get to know people. Do, like, don't just take, I never took hearsay of like, people have come to me and said, don't follow so-and-so, they're bad or whatever. You know what? Let me find out on my own. So do your own research. Talk to them if you want to. Um, there are so many people that told me to avoid people in the reborn community hobby and I don't have to listen to you. That's another thing too. Don't take things too personally because, um, there are a lot of good people in this hobby and there are a lot of manipulative people in this hobby, which in real life there aren't. I like a map. Um, but to a newbie collector, just do research and watch videos. Watch, I remember first discovering this hobby. I watched so many videos, I become addicted to it because I wanted my very first reward. And I was watching videos, box openings, watch, talk to people, uh, try and find someone to befriend and be friends with. And, yeah, just, you know what, go with what your heart thinks. I remember, I remember many years ago, people would say, oh, get this kind of doll from this artist, and this sculptor. But it was so expensive, for instance. And then be like, oh, I don't know, that's too much. If your mind is telling you, like, it's too much or or like feelings of being pressured by other people no 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 stay away from all that <coughs> i'm starting to cough uh 
stay away from people who, if you feel pressured, if you feel um, not confident, just stay away from them. I would say, like, don't be around negative people. Wait, I'm starting to cough. <laughs> Need a drink. I'm just rambling so much. And my throat is dry because I'm. <laughs> okay. I would say, like, stay away from negative people, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? So it, it's up to your personality. Like, to one person is negative and to somebody else it's not negative. So I won't tell you, like, stay away from negative drama, drama, childs, or whatever people are saying. Because to one person is drama and to somebody else is not drama. There are so many different personalities in this hobby. Just find somebody that makes you feel like you inside. Um, find someone that you can relate to and be friends with and talk about the hobby with them. Learn about the hobby together. I mean, sure, when Wendy and I first found each other, she wasn't a reborn artist. And I'm still not. Oh, well, but look at her. Like, you both grow in your different areas. But as long as within you feel comfortable and happy, and that's the most important thing is to feel happy in this, in this hobby. Like, if people say, oh, you need to buy this, you need to buy that, and you don't want to, then don't want to. But if you, if people are saying, oh, buy this, buy that, and you do want to, then, then, Go for it. Try and find a way to get it. Another thing, too, is you don't need everything right away. Like, for instance, my latest thing that I really, really wanted was that certain pacifier. It took me, like, three years to finally just get it and have, you know, and feel good about it and not be pressured into it. Ramble, ramble, ramble. Just be yourself. Love yourself. Love the hobby. Don't feel pressured into anything. And if you love what you love, feel good about it and find people to encourage you and to support you. That's the most important thing. So, yeah, that's, you know what, just love the hobby, have fun, have fun. And, yes, there will be days where it's not fun. But that's how life is anyway, ups and downs, right? They're not always the same thing. But deep down, what you think on the inside, in your heart, then that's the most important, happiest feeling, your inner child. Nurturing your inner child. That that was my target for my channel was to nurture your inner child. <clears throat> but, <laughs> but yeah, anyways guys, hope that you're having a great day. Sorry, I rambled. Wonder how much I'll edit. <laughs> so anyways guys, have a great day. I love you so much. Thank you guys for coming over to my channel. And watching thank you so much i appreciate all of you thank you thank you for for making this journey happy for me you know your comments and your your interactions with me even if it's only in the comments i love it you guys thank you so much so hey thank you Mmm, you smell good. You smell good. See, I can do this. One of the things, too, is um, I don't touch skin on skin. I don't know, it's just, it's just a fear of mine, so. But she is okay. I can do it when she puts that on. With this bonnet on. <laughs> so, this guys, hope that you're having a great day. I love you so much. I'm not guys. You know the drill.
match your hand. Love you. Bye bye. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Love you.